Yeah, man, I'm ready if I'm gonna be Chris. Let's face it, we're all misunderstood. To really get to know or understand someone, you need to dig below the surface. On the exterior, you might not like the natural disposition of my face, or maybe the signals being sent by someone's shifty eyes are uninviting. The truth is, if you never engage that person, you'll never really learn about their true nature. They might just be the sweetest person you'll ever meet. Well, guess what? In the natural world, the same reasoning applies, and perhaps no animal is more misunderstood than the shark. Today, we're going to face our fears by getting face to face with these universally dreaded predators and take the ride of our life with three guys who live on the edge every day by getting up close and personal with the world's most highly evolved hunter. What's happening everybody? I'm really excited about today's episode because we're going to hang out with the shark addicts Cameron, Mickey and Chris. Today we're going to dive without a cage, without scuba gear, we're going to free dive with some sharks. What can we expect to see out there? Uh, probably some bulls, silkies, duskies, sandbars and uh, some black tips. There you go. Don't go anywhere. Stick around. It's going to be a great episode. A good portion of my life has been all about action which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Tenor. Morning. Getting ready for our shark dive. We got some uh, bonita here. Some of the best bait that we use, the bloodiest fish. They school up here during the summer. We like to call this shark crack. So we're gonna load up this crate, get out to our spot. I'll drop this crate down about 40 feet. Let the sharks start congregating around it. Once I see that they're committed, then it's game on. So there's a lot of uh, diversity of wildlife here in South Florida. That's why I love living down here, man. But equally, the same can be said about where we are at this very moment, just off the coast. Oh yeah. So talk to me a little bit about exactly where we're at, man. Right now we're uh, in about 150 feet of water out here. We have such a diversity of fish and wildlife here due to the fact that the Gulf Stream comes closest to shore here in Jupiter. So we like to think of this stretch as a rest stop on the superhighway. Cool. Where all these migrating fish, whales, sharks come running in, hang out on the reefs, on the ledges for the summer, do their thing, and then when it's into their time of the migration, back on the highway. Back on the highway. Okay, so it's a rest stop, if you will. I don't think there's any subways out here or uh, whatever, but um, we're going in, man. We're gonna toss the bait crate in now, get some blood in the water, try to get these sharks going. Cameron has loved sharks his entire life, but it wasn't until his girlfriend got him scuba lessons that he was able to realize his true calling. While the rest of us are nervous right now, this guy can't wait to get in the wall. All right, let's see what we can stir up. A big bull shark on the crate. Chris, will you uh, bring the crate up about 15 feet for me, please? Get right in there. Bull shark. <sighs> I'm not gonna lie, man, this is a little nerve wracking. <laughs> so while this is the sound I'm making in my pants right now, Cameron down below has a completely different sound in mind. 
He likes to crinkle a water bottle to mimic the noise made by the heart rate of a dying fish. That vibration, along with the bait, gives the sharks more information to key in on us quicker. Which, insane as it seems, is exactly what he wants. Big silky. Chris, just raise the crate, but you don't have to clean it off. Just chunking off a couple pieces. A lot of these sharks, most of the sharks that we're gonna encounter here in the Gulf Stream are gonna be pelagic sharks. So open water, blue water sharks, right? They are just as yeah. hesitant to see a human as we are to see them, naturally. Just because they don't see us. It's not like a great white that, you know, can recognize the shape of a seal. We're a kind of pretty foreign object to those pelagic species. So Cam will chunk a couple pieces to let him know it's a, it's a food source. <clears throat> and it's just right now, it's just a ballet. Just both animals getting comfortable with each other. He's a smart animal, an animal that's been around for millions of years. I mean, once they figure out, you know, that mm -hmm. you're not gonna hurt them, yeah. and you're feeding them, mm -hmm. it's a pretty good trade-off. Mm -hmm. In fact, we got a player silky coming in. I'm gonna say it on my hand. If anybody wants to get in, feel free. Just stay close to the boat. I would just recommend when you guys first get in the water, just grab onto the rope, stack up, get a feel for the current. Um, and once you've got a feel for the current and how you know how far it's pushing you and how fast it is, it's not that bad to bend, but you are gonna notice it if you let go. You know you're gonna start to drift. So hold on for a little bit, get your bearings, and then once you get your bearings, man, you guys can spread out. Yeah, there'll be no drifting. Just, just warm up to it. You know? I am not Aquaman. I'll be staying on that rope, possibly. Um, yeah, this is. And of course, if you guys have questions, gear malfunction, bring all that back to the boat. The last thing you want to do is, you know, be having full-on conversations with our heads above the water. Like, like Cam said, you know, these these animals, 400 million years of evolution, they are opportunistic hunters. So, your presence and your you paying attention to them is is the major thing to stay safe on this dive. So, what am I doing? What am I doing with my life? <laughs> Alright, so there are three rules to remember. Stay between the bait box where Cameron is and the boat, maintain eye contact with the sharks, they're big on that one, and stay chill. If you're chill, they're chill. They take their cues from you. See how serious things have just gotten? Got awfully quiet. Got awful quiet up in here, didn't it? Always does, man. I can't sleep tonight before I dive or do anything like this. I just can't. Oh, I got it right there. I'm, I'm forgetting steps here. Big hammerhead. Turn around. Shut the front door. Hammerhead's a scalp hammer. It's kind of good that nobody likes to go into the water. They're very, very... Wary fish? Yes. Okay. They will... They'll hang around just out of visibility range. And, and they'll only come in if if they know for sure it's not a problem situation. Hammerhead right here on the surface. Woo! I have to be straight with you. I love jungles, I love swamps, but the ocean kind of freaks me out a bit. You notice how long it's taking me to get ready? I'm looking at the water before I put my hands in. <laughs> what was that? Oh, God. Get after it then. Okay, please on. cut me some slack, folks. Hold on, hold there on, are on, large on, sharks on, that are going to be on. swimming around us down there. Is it okay if I pee in the water? Because <laughs> I, I got to go to the bathroom. Pee, so burp, throw up, it all helps. Alrighty. Shit, we've all been working on boats doing this collectively for 10 years. Have fun, don't drop the camera. Here we go. <laughs> Let's do this, huh? Let's do this, brother. All right. One, two, three. Four hundred million years of evolution has brought these creatures to perfection as the apex predator in a world that is as foreign to most humans as Mars is. Being down here in their world has me at a heightened level of awareness. Every sense in my body is on point. 
I don't think it's possible to feel more present than I do right now. Like I said, I'm always nervous when I first get in the water. But then you realize, it's like the shark addict said, just stay chill. If you're chill, the sharks are chill. They take their cues from you. And that really is the deal. And once you realize that, you realize that this is freaking amazing. <laughs> Holy crap, dude, that thing came right out of it and hit the camera. Oh, a little sketchy. It's so intimidating, man, when they come right at you. My dad and his dad both think, they say things like, we didn't get to be 81 years old diving with sharks, you idiots. <laughs> I love my dad. All right. I love my mom too. And these guys really love their sharks. Each member of the Shark Addicts team, Cameron, Chris, and Mickey on camera duty, really cares for these creatures. They don't just hang out with these beauties. They're here to help these animals, who unfortunately are constantly in need, like this guy right here. <laughs> Good job. Sick, bro. <coughs> what you got there? Just a little bit of line that was trailing past her dorsal fin. I like to get it past that so it can't wrap around her. I'm gonna try to pop this hook off. Dude, it's really cool. It's like it's so rad because it's just like they come right out of the out of the darkness. You know, they just yeah. appear. They're so silent. They're graceful. They're beautiful. Oh yeah. It's way different seeing a shark under the water. Yep. Then it is the anticipation of being at the surface and being free. Yeah, once out. you see how they interact and how they yeah. want nothing to do with us without this bait, we're right. not going to have these sharks hanging around. They're cool. here for that one reason. Gotcha. Sick. Yeah, it's pretty big. Definitely a good day, a good way to spend your Saturday. It's the same thing, my love of reptiles. These guys love sharks and cameras getting hooks off of them. They're really, you know, trying to be proactive. Uh, you know, conservationists, they work with scientific agencies to help bring the sharks in so the guys can, can actually study them. And look guys, this is not something that we want everybody to go out and do. But in the meantime, I don't want to have a conversation up here. I want to pay attention to what's going on underneath me. Kind of squirrely.
insane day out on the water. Uh, and that's a that's a big thing with you guys. You want people to know that this is not something that everyone should just try and do. You guys have been doing no, this for a long time. Not. Um, you know, you want to know what you're doing, obviously. So uh, it just comes with, you know, time, putting in that time, working with the sharks. You know, I've had many stories and incidents, you know, where I had a dusky coming up and I go for a nose rub and I, you know, lightly touch their nose and she thought it was a piece of food, you know, when it right. touches underneath their nose, the natural reaction for them is to eat. So she gets to chomp and you know, luckily I'm prepared for that type of stuff. So I just held her face while she's chomping away on the water. But it's just, you know, knowing what to expect, you know, what could happen. So I'm well, I, I ready would, for all scenarios. I would imagine that's just it. There's an acceptance. I mean, I went in the water today and I accept the fact that I'm in there with them. There's food in the water. These animals really had no interest in attacking me, no. but it's usually a case of mistaken identity. Yeah. Um, you know, we're grown men. We accept that risk. Yeah. But it's it's really a, a cool experience because you know when you get under there, everything slows down. Yep. And it's a different world. It is, man. It's a different world. You know, we don't have to go to outer space to see an alien world. We just have to go three miles offshore. And it's it's really uh, impressive to be surrounded by these animals. And you guys, I'm stoked that we met up, man. Uh, Mickey's got some cruel cool stories too. Like what happened to your finger a couple weeks ago? I mean, I took my eye off of one of the ten silky sharks we had and bit my hand. This is the bottom teeth. And when it happened, I pulled my hand away. And so their teeth went in, and the top two. Yeah. yeah. Occupational hazard, man. I mean, but you, know, you guys have been pretty safe. Uh, you know, it's like we talked about. You know, I mean, it's going to happen from time to time. But you guys first really, time. Uh, first time for you. 2,500 dives. 2,500 dives, first time. Well, people get <laughs> bit, like you said, mistaken identities. People are getting bit inshore. Right. You know, swimming at dusk and dawn, murky water, smaller sharks that are, you know, on the hunt. You never hear of a story, oh, a person got bit and the shark turned around and bit him again and again. Right, right, right. It's a bite Finish and leave. Exactly. You know, yeah. they don't like the taste of us. Uh, shark Week, they did a thing, I think last year, they took human blood and tuna blood and they put them in like a, you know, hospital drip bag and they floated them on the surface, maybe 20 yards apart. And they did the test with, I think, great whites and greater hammerheads. What do you think the first one they went to? Went for the tuna, man. Tuna. That's 400 yeah. million years of evolution. They know what they want. They are tuned into it. They are tuned in. What's the message you guys collectively want to get across to folks out there about what you do? Because, you know, some people are going to say, oh, these guys are, you know, not supposed to be touching these animals. They're not supposed to be, you know, feeding them. Yeah. Uh, are you habituating them? What is your message and what do you say to those people that may be critics? I mean, the main message is just to, uh, you know, save the sharks, get people to know that sharks aren't the killers and the man-eaters that the media and the movies have portrayed them to be. You know, ever since uh, Jaws was created, everybody and their mother wanted to go kill and catch sharks after that movie. So, uh, you know, we're just trying to, you know, reach as many people as we can throughout the world to help, you know, sh put that positive light on it. Yeah. People have the wrong idea. And in the past 50 years, you know, their numbers have dwindled by 90%. And think about that, 420 million years they date back to, they've survived five mass extinctions. But in the past 50 years, we are killing them off. But, and without sharks in the ocean, the ocean fails. You know, they're the chain of command. They eat the old, sick, weak, diseased, the dying fish. So those fish don't breed and create an ocean full of diseased fish. They help maintain that well-balanced ecosystem. So without them, our oceans fail, our planets fail. Nobody thinks about that bigger picture. Our planet's 72% water, so I think we need to stick with protecting this first. This Very is cool. And you know what? You guys are doing a great job. It's it's amazing that you can actually get out here with these guys. If you are a thrill seeker, it's not necessarily that. Um, it was actually quite relaxing. Just listen to what they have to say. I did break a rule. I went a little bit too far <laughs> past the bait box. I noticed that and promptly got back. Um, it was a great day. I just want to thank you guys, man. It's been really, really cool. Our pleasure. You guys are awesome. Yeah. There's definitely a love. I don't want to be careful with you, little hand there. I don't want to get any of that pus on me, dude. <laughs> but uh, if you guys are interested, uh, if you haven't figured out that they are all over Instagram, at Shark Addicts and Shark Addicts 2, that's Mickey, you guys can actually get out here with these fellas for a nominal fee. Uh, but you'll learn a lot. You'll have a great time. And um, 
you'll come away with uh, way more respect for the ocean and the animals in it. So, Pump, we're going to do more together for sure. Absolutely. We, we live in the same town. We're going to bring you guys out. We're going to do some turtle wrangling and uh, gator, gator, gator watching, wrestling, wrestling. <laughs> we'll have fun with these guys coming up, man. Thanks again, guys. No problem. problem. See you soon. Uh, Thanks for watching. Don't forget, we'll be back on Thursday with a live broadcast at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. See you then.